Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Curry Parker. Welcome to the Understanding Human Design podcast. I'm here today with Lana Jermicki, and we're going to be talking about how you can get up and why you need to get up and why you need to take action to create what you really want to be creating in your life. Welcome, Lana. It's nice to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. We have been talking for quite a while now. I think you and I met uh, in the very beginning of your human design journey when you were sharing with me about your unique potential formula and your book, Getting Up, which was what, about three or four years ago? Oh, four years ago, yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you, 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 after that, you start, or actually kind of right around that time, you started integrating human design into your unique potential formula. Talk to me a little bit about what is the unique potential formula? So to understand it, uh, there's the two parts of it. The first part is called unique design, where um, that's where I really help people figure out what they're here for, what their life purpose is. And that's when I discovered, I mean, I've been studying astrology since I was probably, you know, I could read. I was five years old or so. But even in the direction of all my uh, education in astrology, something was missing. And, and when I discovered human design, it just gave me the answers of what I needed to hear and what my life purpose is and to follow it and take the steps. And so when I discovered you online and I'm like, oh my gosh, this was meant to be. So (laughs) (laughs) off I went. And and so that's why I use, I put unique design and I use other tools as well to help people. Um, But it's just so foundational of, of how much it helps and tells people. So The second part of the formula is taking action. Um, There's so many people that, yeah, you can look at your chart and maybe understand it a little, but do you do anything about it? That's the whole Mm -hmm. difference about taking action. So lots of people can look at the numbers, but what do they do about it? How are you going to go forward? What is going to change in your life? How are you going to be happier? And discover that whole purpose, which is where I give a little kick, I call it. So I have a question yeah. because I think, I think you're, you're absolutely right. That's like a huge thing that comes up for people. They're, they're like, okay, I got my design. Now what, what do I do about it? And, and, you know, some of us are designed to do more doing. You're a manifesting generator. I'm a manifesting generator. You know, we have doing as part of our protocol. Yeah. What do you find is the thing that you tell people the most to go do as part of living their design or learning about it um well one of them is even i mean we're all different in how we do it but even to just a couple things is one is to experiment what you're supposed to do for yourself because we have to learn skills we do we have talents but we have to take those talents into a skill if we want to do something the other side is to um to get help Mm. so many of us try to do everything on our own and it's (laughs) 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 it does so it's one of those um just a a big change to help people um so that's how i have to take action they can decide how they're going to do it if they want me to tell them what to do more then i will and i'll put my foot down and say okay this is the day set your date make it happen here we go (laughs) right Perfect. So you hold people accountable by giving them I do. metrics around action. I do. That that's to it's such a big thing. I guess it's what I grew up with as well, you know. Always being on appointments on time and that sort of thing. So So okay, so the unique potential formula has first of all discover who you are basically, right? Yes. And then take action. Is there a third step? Nope, that's it. It is very simple. It's very (laughs) simple what the formula says. Actually doing it's a whole different thing, right? So that's where I like to kick people to do it. So you landed on this formula because of your own journey with illness, yes? Yes, I did. So talk to me about what you learned and how you learned about the importance of action, the importance of getting up, if you will, through your own journey? Well, there's different stages. So before I got sick, I grew up as a dancer. 
And so I'm going to put my profile out there as a two five. So I would always, you know, have this separate secret life going on. And then I'd be getting on stage and dancing and kind of doing what I thought I was supposed to do as well, like what people were telling me to do. Um, and then through university was when I, and I didn't even want to go to university. I didn't even know what it was. I think I was like, okay, I'm supposed to go, whatever we're supposed to do here. And <laughs> off I went and figured stuff out there. Um, but that's when I got sick because of being pushed all the time to follow, I call it the military lifestyle mm -hmm. of, of what had to be done. And so um, when I first got sick in university, I ignored it. I had my first seizure and my brother, um, he noticed it and he's like, you know what just happened? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> and it was right after final exams and that kind of stuff. So I had my first epileptic seizure. And after that, it just grew, but I ignored it the whole time. So mm -hmm. for 10 years, I went and traveled the world and was working on stages on cruise ships. And I was having, you know, 15 to 20 seizures a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so it, it became to a point as they were getting stronger that I had to do something about it. Um, so when I moved back to Canada, um, it, you know, I started having more grand mals and Lucky for me, um, I was able to have brain surgery and I qualified even to have the brain surgery, which only 2% of the world qualifies. Mm -hmm. And then only 50% survived that. So knock on wood, I've been healthy since. But that was a big trauma journey for me to yeah. get past. I can imagine. Yeah. And so to, to live with it for 10 years was tough. So, so what changed when you got to the other side of that and you woke up and said okay i've gone through this trauma journey if you will i'm i've been lucky enough to qualify for this surgery i survived the surgery what was the next phase of creating action in your life after that so as i like to push myself i um after one year, so the part of the brain they took out was I had to learn how to speak English again, basically. Mm -hmm. And after one year, I thought I was back on track and was doing the right thing. And I wanted to go back to work. And I still, I already own a, one of my businesses, which I still run. Um, but I wanted to go back to work with all of it. And I tried to go back to work and I couldn't even write a letter still. Mm. So, so that was my big journey back was learning how to communicate again correctly and reading and puzzles. And so finally, I did go back to work. And this is what I'll say about this is a great journey to go on. And then the one day it just hit me and I started feeling that anxiety again, like the people that you can get. And just like, I felt like I was going to start having seizures again because I was so in the wrong place, making a ton of money, lots of dough, but I just did not belong there. And I just took it upon myself to quit, which I won't recommend to anybody, um, <laughs> but I did. And that's when I started to discover my path and I let myself away from the financial industry to who I am and what my purpose is here for. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a big step. And that for sure took a couple of years. That's a, that's a powerful journey though. And, and so I, 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 you know, I want to ask you this because I know that there are a lot of people that are sitting, say in jobs, for example, that they hate and they feel that anxiety or some people even feel just sort of half dead or burned out, but they have this fear that, well, if I leave, I'll lose my security. I'll lose my foundation. I'll lose my income. I'll lose my, can I risk it? Why don't I just hang on until I retire, then I can go do what I want to do when I retire. And obviously, you know, when that hits you at a certain point, particularly when you still have a lot of working years ahead of you, you really get clear sometimes either through the body or through just your own internal experience that you have to make change. Mm -hmm. How did you find the courage at that point? And what did you do to get yourself moving out of what was, you know, stressful, but secure, maybe yep. into something that maybe wasn't as predictable and secure, but in alignment with your truth. So I, when I was coming down, I don't know, you know, if people that have ever worked in the financial industry, it, it can be very, very stressful, especially watching the markets go up and down. And, you know, and people losing their work, as you say, and working in a position where they're not happy, um, 
one, <laughs> I have a couple answers for everything you said. <laughs> so first of all, if you're working your, your job and it's maybe not the work you're doing, it's the people are around you of how you're perceiving them and how you think you're being perceived. So you could actually like what you're doing, um, but maybe, you know, just a different perspective of who you are and how much you help is really great. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of it is if you taking the risk to discover what you are supposed to do is and then taking action it's not a risk to discover it it's actually taking action on it is mm -hmm. is really the big part that i like to help people with and the courage i guess i was just so burnt i was just so burnt i didn't know what else to do mm -hmm. I, and, and because i'd been through going through my brain surgery and and all of that stuff i'm like well lana you want to end up back in the hospital or you want to go and enjoy life like which it was just a choice i had to make i love that because i do think sometimes as complicated as we make it seem sometimes it is simply just making that choice mm -hmm. and following through with the action so mm -hmm. beautiful so so one of the other things that you and I have talked about over in the, in the last little bit is, and this, this is a tricky one for, I think, time benders slash manifesting generators is part of aligning yourself towards taking the right action is also realizing you don't have to do it all. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I am a do it all person and I, and, and it's just learning as I was growing. So as I, you know, figured out, uh, when I took my first coaching course that I did uh, here in the city through Abe Brown is his name. I will mention him. He's a fabulous mentor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There was something about it. It was just a weekend course and I discovered myself there. I'm like, yes, okay, this is it. And I started doing all the research. And um, so I guess, I mean, that's just where I took my first big step and started. And now I've got like, I don't know, five certificates around the world beyond my degrees <laughs> on everything I do. So being a manifesting generator, I don't stop. As you say, I run, I actually run three companies all together. <laughs> and, and that's, I just, um, I manage my time okay. And if I'm not doing something, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, <laughs> big difference. And so because you, I mean, you do, you started off business coaching and you have now said, dis, you know, discovered through your own work that really what people are looking for is not necessarily so much business coaching as it is about life purpose coaching, which is really where you focus your energy right now. But I, I would say that I have found in, in the work that I've done in business coaching, that not doing it all is really essential for the long-term sustainability of an entrepreneur, that if you're trying to fill all the roles and wear all the hats in your business as we tend to do in the beginning that it's exhausting and depleting so how do you recognize mm. what are the things that you need to outsource or give to someone else how do you how do you know what's what do you need to keep on your plate and what do you need to maybe get rid of well that was part of um i guess and part of um, going through my own was what am i spending so much time on and not getting a cent for Mm. You know, so I, as, as a web developer, and I love doing design work, I just love it. It's the artistic side of me. And it, um, but I, I could spend 12 hours having fun creating a website mm -hmm. versus working on getting myself out and networking and, and, you know, to really promote myself. So it took some courage to just say, you know what? And especially this, I mean, many people can probably relate to this is the way technology continues to change. Mm -hmm. There's many other reasons. Like if you don't stay up with technology every week, you fall behind. Or Facebook marketing. Or Facebook marketing. <laughs> or like any of that as part of technology. Like you just have to keep going and going and going. Well, when do you have time for anything else? Like mm -hmm. you just, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> totally, uh, totally. So, so you coach people to find their unique potential using your unique potential formula. You show them how they need to take right action to get themselves up. Your book is called Getting Up. You wanna show us your book? Sure, sure. This is the back, but, and it's, it's, I always find about this. So when I found this symbol, so action potential, 
um, what's so ironic about it is actually how they measure the neurons in your brain, how your brain is working. So if you actually look up action potential, I just created it in my mind. <laughs> when I did some research on it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is, the, <laughs> this is closer to me than I thought all about, you know, after having brain surgery and stuff. So I make a little joke about that in there, but I have a whole formula and even on my website, um, which is gettingupnow.com, people can go and take a quiz to just to measure themselves and where they're at in their potential right now. So you can help set goals and what you want to do. And Beautiful. So, so you work with people to help them set their goals and then you give them a little. And I have them take action on it. It's, <laughs> <to get laughs> it's like, did you do this yet? <laughs> Well, and you know, how much, how much is of, I think the piece is once you start to take action, then the action itself becomes seductive and you stay in momentum. But, you know, I will certainly say, you know, and I joke with my husband about this all the time, you know, the older I get, the more seductive inertia becomes. <laughs> and, and so staying in action becomes not only a way to get things done, but maybe a, a way of combating the inertia of being an old lady in a chair. Um, so so you, you help people stay in action, get their, get their stuff done so they can really fulfill their potential. So you said, and again, just to, to refresh, your website is gettingupnow.com. So you guys can connect with Lana and uh, get some get some serious action rolling with get, at her website gettingupnow.com, and your book is Getting Up, which is available. I'm assuming on Amazon. Yeah, okay. Yep, it's on Amazon for sure. Anything else you want to talk about today or share with us? Um, that's lots. I just I want to let everybody know that I am this the Getting Up um, Unique Potential Formula is actually a course. Mm -hmm. And I will be launching that course um, mid-February here. So if you're interested in actually going forward with something with your chart instead of just looking at it and twiddling your thumbs, that's what this course is about. So I, I just want to invite our listeners to, to really hear you out because I think that, you know, a lot of times we come across something that we know is going to make a difference. It's really going to change us. It's going to spur us into action, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the trick in doing that thing is doing that thing. And so I really want to encourage you guys to check out Lana's work and then really look at what do you need to do to put yourself into action so that you're taking those actions that support you and mm -hmm. lift you up and give you the information and the energy even. The, the energy, you yeah. Exactly. Really keep going. So check out Lana's course, the Unique Potential Formula course on her website getupnow.com getting, getting, getting up, up now getting up now.com <laughs> and uh again check out lana's book getting up and uh, it's been awesome to talk to you again it's been yeah. really wonderful to spend some time with you take good care of yourself and thanks for joining us today thanks karen bye